Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And if you followed anything on this channel, you know that I am obviously slightly obsessed with Leica cameras. And uh, while I am most definitely not an ambassador, but hello Leica, if you would like me to be one, that would be fantastic. Um, I have become sort of the de facto ambassador to a lot of other professional photographers and friends and stuff like that who want to uh, know a little bit more about the database, which is me, about Leica cameras. Um, and one of the first questions that I get asked all the time is like, all right, I'm, I'm thinking about buying a Leica. What's like the first lens I should buy? Um, and so I've gone through, I think I've owned five different 35 millimeter lenses, and I'm always sort of on the hunt for the perfect, inexpensive, great 35 millimeter lens. And that's what kind of brought me to this Seven Artisans 35 f1.4. So while this video isn't actually sponsored by Seven Artisans, they did send this over for review. Um, but what this is sort of sponsored by is the people that are subscribed to my Patreon. So if you're interested in learning more about the techniques and the things that uh, go into the stuff kind of beyond the gear, I make a couple of videos a month that are more tutorial based. Um, and that sort of is the thing that allows me to also do some things on this channel. So sponsored basically by the thing that I do myself, so check it out. Anyway, so in the box, which is really cool, again, it has different styling than the other Seven Artisans lenses. You get some cool stuff. Um, you get this lens pouch, which is actually really similar to the lens pouch that comes with the Sumalux 50. Um, and there are actually a few other similarities to the Sumalux 50 that I'll mention right off the bat. When when you first pull it out and you first see this lens, honestly, like maybe it's just because I look at too many Leica lenses and stuff, but it just does not look like a 35 millimeter lens to me. It looks like a 50 millimeter. Um, and I think it's just because it's just a such a small, like cylindrical um, mount and base and stuff like that. Um, it also has a few things that are similar in terms of like it has the, uh, built-in lens hood that the 50 Sumalux has as well. So, and styling wise too, I know that my 50 Sumalux is the silver version, so it has the red markings instead of the yellow, uh, but it also has the red markings on here. So honestly, if you're going to kind of like slightly emulate any type of lens, uh, making one that looks sort of similar to a $4,000 plus lens is not a bad thing. I also really love the kind of like, it's not black paint, but it's not matte either. It's kind of like this middle, slightly glossy, slightly matte finish uh, that I feel like looks really good. It has this metal lens cap that um, has a little bit of like felt or something like that in there. So when you put it on, it doesn't fall off um, like some metal caps do. And then this is a really, really weird small thing that shouldn't really matter much, but the back cap for the lenses is amazing. Like it's it's as good as the Leica ones. Uh, it has a little bit of like resistance to it. I have a few back caps from other lenses that um, they just kind of flop around on the back. And so it's a weird thing to be um, excited about, but the back cap on this lens is really, really great. And it like only falls off if you take it off, but if you turn it, it's not going anywhere. Um, so in that regard, it's really great. Again, with the styling, and this is the, uh, the other thing, again, that like brought me to being really, really intrigued by this lens. Uh, I've seen a couple of good reviews of it anyway, but I love the styling of this. And if we kind of like mount it on the M10 right here, you'll see that it doesn't, it just doesn't feel like a knockoff Leica lens. It feels and like looks like its own thing, which is, for a like, you know, third party manufacturer, for me at least, this is the first Seven Artisans lens that I felt like is like its own thing. I think it's the WEN or W-E-N series. Um, I don't know if that means it's made by a different manufacturer or whatever it is, but the styling with this little character here um, and just the minimal way it looks, I think like really complements the system um, and 
looks pretty premium. The focusing ring is good. It's not like too soft. It's not too hard. Um, they do give you a little focusing tab that has adhesive that you can put on. And I really do enjoy focusing tabs, so I'll probably put this on eventually. But um, that is one of the things about this lens is uh, for the price, they kind of ask you to do a couple things. Uh, so one of which is put that on yourself. And the second of which is my lens did not come completely calibrated. It back focused slightly when um, I was using my rangefinder. So what you have to do, and I'll do a little close up here. What you have to do on this camera is, and it works really well with a digital camera because you have live view and stuff like that. Um, but if you can see here, you have these three little spaces here, and I just touched the back of the lens, oops. But you have these three little spaces here where there's a screw, and then you go in there, um, loosen it up, and then this whole ring turns, and then you can go in there, adjust that, um, you know, turn the ring, and then once it's, you think it's ready, put it back on the camera, check it. Again, thankfully, I have a digital camera, and so it makes it really easy, um, but, the process took me about 10 minutes to kind of just like troubleshoot, changing it one way, trying it out, seeing where it went, changing it the other way. Um, and after that, I feel like it's pretty spot on. And um, as long as I tightened the screws tight enough, which I believe I did, I, it should stay on there um, for a long time. So moving on from the focusing, the other thing that's like really interesting about this is this, aperture ring, it's not in half stops, it's not in third stops, it's in whole stops. And it's only ever so slight. Like a lot of lenses, like, let's see, like this Zeiss is in third stop increments. And so when you turn it, you hear that really obvious change in the aperture. And what's interesting about this is it's in full stops, but it also like is very dampened. And so like you just kind of barely, it, it'll stop on each aperture, but like really lightly. So it's kind of an interesting setup. Um, I don't really, I've never actually had a lens or played with a lens or used a lens that's done that before. So kind of a weird thing. I kind of wish they made it a little bit more hard stops um, than this, because I feel like I might end up bumping this and moving it. Yeah, especially there, like, because it sits kind of like, if you move it, it doesn't really have a really easy time sitting at each aperture. So uh, I would love it if in the future, the, the next set of lenses or whatever, it was a little bit harder to move and get bumped from each aperture. Um, and then moving on to the lens hood. It's a really cool design, like the 50 Sumalux. Um, I do just wish that like there was a way to like bring it back, lock it. Um, cause like my 50 Sumalux will go in like this and then lock and then same thing, it go out and then lock. And so I wish it was like that because that's the only thing that's like really loose about this lens. Um, this lens hood just kind of like, I don't know. It's a little too like flimsy for me. Um, I do like it though. But again, it's it's one of those things that like, it looks like a 50 millimeter or maybe even like a 75 millimeter. So it kind of just throws me off that it is like, you know, a semi wide angle. So I got this lens about a week ago um, and my wife and I actually have a newborn at home as well as our four year old. And so I figured just kind of like running around the house and shooting it like that. Um, as well as I kind of put it through a few different tests that we'll see here, um, have been a really good way to kind of see how it works and how it feels. So um, I feel like it is pretty sharp and has a really kind of cool rendering to it. So you can see lenses often kind of fall apart wide open, especially at the corners. And you can see a little bit of that here, but if we kind of zoom in you know, on my, my son's face, it's not like sharp, sharp, but especially for stuff like this, it has a good look. Um, you can see like the bokeh here has some cool slight like cat eye 
to it uh, without being too overly crazy. Looks good. So then my wife and I actually took our son up to um, an appointment and stuff like that today. I brought this lens along and then immediately saw some kind of extreme portions of this. And so again, where lenses kind of fall apart, uh, especially wider lenses, uh, is in the corners. And so especially with a lot going on and in the corners, I thought this would be a really good test. So um, we can see here that, you know, I'm focusing on the back of my wife's head, but it definitely separates out from the rest of what's going on. But then up here in the corner is where we just get like crazy chaos. You know, this kind of thing is just like unreal because there's a lot going on and the lens is trying to resolve all that information. That being said, like, it's a cool look. Um, you have definitely some big swirling and moving going on in that direction. So I kind of shot straight into the sun, straight into this kind of stuff. And you can see in here, um, you know, you got this big time swirl going on that way. There's a little bit of a lens flare. Um, but then one of the other things that you're gonna be kind of looking out for is the chromatic aberration. You definitely see a lot of that in here. I mean, again, this is like ultimate stress test um, because you also see some of the um, kind of more extreme vignetting and stuff like that in this image. Um, and especially in like up here, you can see kind of like a green cast coming down, but then also you see the bokeh and everything like that swirling around, which is a pretty cool look though. And honestly, that's pretty acceptable sharp, um, you know, when shooting wide open on a rangefinder, You get kind of some over here, you can see a little bit of this um, kind of streaking and stuff like that. And then um, obviously the haze up there, and then you can see a really obvious kind of like bokeh um, swirl going on. You can see that here as well. Um, you know, like this is pretty, pretty good, pretty sharp, um, especially again, wide open, but you really start to see that swirling effect going on over here where, you know, you can just see it curving in the trees, curving in the leaves right here and kind of creating that whole look. Um, the other thing that I'll say about the bokeh is that, um, when you look at it, you can kind of see some more fringing and stuff around there. It's definitely not as smooth as some other lenses like the Sumalux or uh, even the Zeiss are at times. Um, and I don't know a lot about lens design and like what that actually is or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Um, but the lens that this reminds me most of, especially with those characteristics, was the Zeiss 50 1.5 sonar that I had for the Leica M mount. It had a really like classic rendering, classic bokeh vintage feel to it, which is really what I feel like this lens has in spades is character and that vintage feel while being like pretty darn acceptably sharp. Uh, I've shot with some of the more vintage uh, 35 Sumaluxes and the 50 Sumalux, and I feel like, um, you know, those lenses from like the 70s, I feel like this has a lot of those characteristics while being actually sharper and less kind of hazy and dreamy as those. Um, so again, for a more budget lens, and I don't even think we've mentioned how much this is, it's only 430, 450 bucks. Um, so for that setup, you're getting a really, really good image. Um, now you can, you know, stop down to like 5.6 and up here in the corners, sure, it's a little bit soft, you're getting a little bit of haze, um, but in general, you know, for like a good walk around lens, I feel like a lot of this is like totally acceptable. So again, I've just been kind of using this around the house, um, you know. If you look in here, you can see kind of like those individual hairs and stuff like that have like a pretty good amount of sharpness. It definitely is a lot more sharp than other um, more inexpensive lenses and more vintage kind of feels um, in other ones that I've tried at least. You know, so especially for this kind of stuff, like that looks pretty great. Um, here's a good example of something that I was kind of trying to stress test as well. You know, this is at 5.6, so you can see all of those 
you know, little perforations in the backboard there. Um, but then when we move kind of from that one over to the one I shot at 1.4, you know, you see more of that kind of fringing, less detail, and then you see a significant amount more um, contrast and uh, kind of lack of depth. You see some of that crazy, crazy bokeh down here um, and kind of that it almost looks busy and like frantic and movie. Um, but I feel like that's again, sort of a characteristic of those more classic rendering lenses. Honestly, pretty great. Um, you're seeing more chromatic aberration up there and you can kind of see again, like some of this kind of bokeh, I guess this is another like extreme test, but this is kind of where that fringing and, and stuff like that around the bokeh feels a little bit busy. But honestly, again, for like a 450 ish dollar lens, for the Leica M mount, it renders really cool. Um, and I feel like some of that stuff is pretty desirable. Again, some fringing here back and forth, but it's a great lens that has been really fun for me to kind of photograph with. So I just took it out of my backyard and did some direct comparisons between the Zeiss Distagon 35 1.4 and then the Seven Artisans Wen 35 1.4. Um, and I will show you, I didn't do them on a tripod or anything like that. So you're not gonna get like a direct, you know, exact match. Um, but I feel like what you are seeing in this is really helpful. So um, I'm not gonna say which lens is which, but maybe after kind of seeing some of the first images with it, you might be able to kind of tell which one is which, right? So here is lens A. We just, I just wanted to shoot just a, you know, super out of focus image, uh, minimum focusing distance to see kind of how everything rendered. And here is lens B. Um, so the first thing you'll notice too is that the second lens is significantly warmer and the first lens is significantly cooler. Um, I didn't do like an actual white balance test to see which one was accurate, um, but there is definitely a big color difference between the two lenses. So doing a, another minimum focusing test. So here is the sharpness of the leaves on lens A. Here is the sharpness of the leaves on lens B. Uh, and I honestly feel like they're pretty similar. I mean, this is like focus dead center, um, but if we look kind of in on this stuff, you know. They don't look too far off. Um, here was another one, here's lens A, lens B. One of the things that showed up in both lenses is this kind of purple fringing and chromatic aberration in the front, and then the green fringing and chromatic aberration in the back. So that's A, this is B. So kind of similar stuff going on on both of them. Uh, one of the things I will also mention here because the, it's similar on lens A, uh, it's pretty clean right here on this top part. And then on lens B, you also have a little bit of chromatic aberration and fringing and stuff like that on this top part. So here's A, here's B. These are both wide open, minimum focusing distance. A, B, Straight on, straight on. Okay, and this is the last one. Oops. All right, so if you liked lens A, then you liked the Zeiss. If you liked lens B, you liked the Seven Artisans. I was actually really surprised um, at the results and how similar they were. I would say the Seven Artisans is definitely warmer, uh, fairly significantly warmer. 
and the bokeh on it isn't as smooth, um, and it's definitely not as sharp in comparison. Uh, here's a good example of that kind of like swirliness, you know, going on where the Zeiss doesn't have nearly as much of that. Um, but some of the bokeh and stuff like that is fairly similar. I think the thing that became most kind of like evident to me is the sharpness difference. Um, you know, so like here is like, you know, 120% or whatever on the Zeiss, um, you know, trying to focus kind of on that T-star thing. But you're also getting that chromatic aberration and stuff like that there. Um, and then here is the Seven Artisans. So it's just definitely not as sharp um, and it has a little bit of kind of like haze and stuff like that around there. You get a little bit as it falls off a little bit more hazy and, and stuff like that. But honestly, like they render like pretty comparably. Um, the Zeiss is clearly the winner, but the Zeiss is also over $2,000. I think it's like $2,200 or $2,300. Um, and then again, this Seven Artisans is $430 to $450. So especially as like a first lens or an auxiliary lens or something like that, it makes a really, really good buy. One last comparison between the two lenses. Um, they're actually fairly similar in size. Uh, I was actually anticipating the Seven Artisans to be a little bit smaller. The, the Zeiss definitely kind of like bulges out right here a little bit more. Um, and then with the lens hood, it's bigger. Um, this is just an aftermarket lens hood, but they are actually really similar in, in weight as well. I think the Zeiss was like 10 grams heavier, but not as significantly heavy as I was anticipating. So one of the only things that's kind of like another downside about both of these lenses is that you know, when you hold it, it's definitely front like lens heavy. It's definitely not super balanced. Um, it wasn't like a big issue, but you know, it just like is a little bit front heavy. When you set it down, it rests forward on the lens. And um, if that's a deal breaker to you, they also make a 35 F2, which I've never tested, but one of my personal lenses is this Voigtlander 28. One of the things I really love about it is that it's just so small and it's body heavy, not lens heavy. So if that's a deal breaker to you, I don't really think it matters that much um, in the grand scheme of things, especially at this price point, but just wanted to make it known. So overall, when I reach out to Seven Artisans and wanted to kind of test this lens out, the question I was kind of getting at and wanting to answer is, is this like a great lens for someone to maybe use as their first Leica lens or as an auxiliary lens? Maybe you have a couple other ones or something like that. Um, and the answer to that, thankfully, is yes. Um, it's built well, it has a lot of good features. The styling is something that looks unique and doesn't look like a ripoff of another company. Um, I feel like the rendering is unique enough that it's really kind of cool and uh, I like a lot about it. It has not like super modern sharpness, but like a modern look to it with also having a lot of vintage rendering to it. But I probably wouldn't use this as like my only lens if I was, you know, photographing weddings or something like that. I use it, my lens is wide open a lot. And so having that kind of like corner to corner sharpness is really important to me for like group shots and stuff like that. Um, which is why I often just use more modern lenses for things, things like that. But if I was, you know, just using this as a personal lens or as a kind of like a more creative tool, I think it's a really, really good option. And I would 100% recommend this as a great kind of like first dive into the Leica system and some good M mount glass. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this lens, I know it's pretty new. Um, I've definitely photographed a few hundred photos with it and kind of done it in all sorts of different scenarios. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I know there's not a lot of information about this, so I would be more than happy to help. Um, and if you want to learn more about, 
you know, lenses and stuff like that, you can definitely subscribe to this channel. That would be super helpful. And then if you want to learn more about how I go about actually making my photos, learning about editing, composition, all that kind of stuff, uh, Patreon is definitely the place to be for that. Uh, so I will put links to both of those things um, down in the description below. I will also put a link to this, obviously, in the description below. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon, uh, which I will have an affiliate link. So if you buy this or anything else on Amazon, if you click through the links, it would obviously help me out quite a bit. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.